Let's get into the latest on the Dallas Cowboys. First is Rico Dowdle suffered a hip contusion against the Patriots. That's just basically a, a bad hip bruise. Uh, Mike McCarthy says there's a chance that uh, Dowdle will be able to play against the 49ers. We'll see if that ends up being the case. Uh, he's he's going to be in the rehab group most likely on Wednesday. Now, he might miss some time in the end with that injury, but this is better than what I've kind of been concerned about. Uh, Dowdle fractured his hip in 2021, and hip injury ruled out quickly was not uh, a, a good sign early on. But it sounds like he's at least going to miss not much time if he does miss some time. Uh, Dowdle actually has 20 carries already this year, 80 yards, so a four-flat rate there. Also has done some nice work in the passing game. Had the screen touch, and we had a screen play that worked, thanks in large part to Dowdle. Five catches, 50 yards, and a score. Here's what will likely happen in the event that Dowdle cannot go against the Niners or wherever. Uh, Tony Pollard's obviously going to remain RB1. Uh, I think the, the last game, by the way, against the Patriots was pretty clear of like, hey, let's give Pollard a breather. The Cowboys had 71 snaps in that football game. Pollard played 37. Game was out of hand. They went ahead and lightened the workload for Pollard in that one, even with the Rico Dattle injury. It was a big workload for Deuce Vaughn and Hunter Lipke, who the Cowboys are going to keep an eye out for in terms of just being healthy and getting the job involved there in, in the red zone. If Dowdle cannot play, Malik Davis is the likely man to get called up to the game day roster, probably as a practice squad promotion. So do keep that in mind that Davis is an option on the practice squad. So are you worried about the Cowboys' injuries? Why for yes, N for no. It's not just Rico Dowdle. We're about to get into Zach Martin's status. But take advantage of the potential ad here on YouTube and go vote at the pinned comment. Why for yes and for no are you worried about the Cowboys' injuries? Let's check in on Zach Martin. I'll also make a quick note here, by the way. Uh, should have, potentially could have uh, Matt Wiletsko and Nishan right back soon. We'll see about Tyron Smith. I'm hoping he can get limited work in this week. Need him out there. Uh, Martin left the game against Patriots with what has been reported as a bruised quad, which does not sound very fun. Sounds fairly painful. In theory... A bruised quad would not prevent you from playing on Thunder Night against the 49ers. The Cowboys have also, also said last time, Martin's not going to miss any time. It was the same refrain of, he's fine, then he didn't play. So I kind of need to see him get some work in at practice this week before I feel confident in that one. He's been banged up a lot this year, various bumps and bruises and tweaks and rolls, etc. I, I would love it, especially against the 49ers, if for the first time, with this group of, along the offensive line, if the Cowboys can actually have their starting five together, again, we'll see about Tyron Smith. We'll see about Zach Martin. I maybe feel a little bit more confident in Martin than Tyron. Again, we'll, we'll see overall. But you've never had your starting five, this starting five offensive line together. In fact, you've not had it since the last, the, the second last time he played the Niners back in the 2021 NFL playoffs. Now, if Martin can't go, I actually wonder if TJ Bass would get the nod at right guard. Uh, four hurries allowed this year in 148. That's actually, actually played a bit more than what you would expect. 59.4 uh, PFF run grade, a little bit inconsistent, a little bit not, not as best showing against Arizona. I thought was better against the Patriots. You could always kick Chuma Adoga over there, but he might need to get some work in in case Tyron Smith can't go. So keep an eye on TJ Bass being your option if, unfortunately, Martin is unable to play. We'll know more later on in the week. Are subscriptions draining your wallets? The average person has around 12 paid subscriptions, and you might not even remember subscribing to half of those. If you have no idea how much you're spending and what you're spending on per month, you need Rocket Money. It's this great app that tracks all of your expenses so you know exactly where your money is going. This blew my mind when I find out, but over 80% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about. Most would think they're spending around 80 bucks a month on subscriptions. The reality number, closer to 200. If you are signed up for a lot of things, things streaming services, uh, maybe you're signed up for a food delivery service, you got that one time for the deal, and then you forgot to cancel it, yeah, 
happens to all of us. Rocket Money monitors all your expenses in one place, can recommend custom budgets based on your past spending, and will cancel your subscriptions for you with a press of the button. No long hold times or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does the work for you. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash cowboys. That's rocketmoney.com slash cowboys. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. It's rocketmoney.com slash cowboys. Let's talk about Chuma Adoga here, who, you know, middling is what he's been this year. There have been some really bad reps at left tackle. I thought he's been better at left guard than at left tackle. Uh, allowed a sack against the Patriots, could have allowed more had, you know, Dak not spun away from some defenders there. Two hurries allowed. He's been, I think, pretty solid as a run blocker, all things considered, but y- you need more. At, like, I, I, he's survivable. He's not someone you're necessarily going to thrive with uh, on offense. I think you saw some of that in the red zone, too, right? Your O-line misses some key blocks. It's oftentimes a Doga being involved there. He's not been bad. But he hasn't been good either. He's been middling so far. I would love it if Tyron could get back out there. One note, by the way, as we talk about the offensive line here, I thought Tyler Smith was great against him. That might have been the best game he's ever played. He, he, was, he was a people mover in the run game, held up really well in pass protection. I have been very impressed so far with Tyler Smith this season. All right, here is our programming schedule for the week, folks. We're live today, Monday, again, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Be live again on Thursday, same time, and then a watch party on Sunday. That's an 8.20 Eastern time kick. We'll be live an hour before, the hour plus before the game gets going at 7 p.m. Eastern for what will be an electric Sunday night matchup between the Cowboys and the 49ers. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Want to stay positive here, too. We were kind of negative on that last one. Michael Gallup looks a lot better. First two games, it's like, okay, is Gallup cooked? He's been bad. Uh, he had, in the first two games, he was targeted four times. He caught two passes for 13 yards. It's a 6.5 average. The last two weeks, 13 targets, 11 catches, 152 yards. He's over doubled his average. He is generating more separation. He's looking more confident. He's looking more, more fluid. He looks more like the guy we saw earlier in his career. Now, you still need to get Brandon Cooks going a little bit more. He, he's made some third down plays for you. Uh, the, the deep shots, I think they want to take if the O-line can get fully healthy, maybe, has, have not materialized. They've kind of, I think, telegraphed some of those shot plays to a certain expen- uh, extent, but... Hey, Brandon Cooks has done not enough so far, but at least Gallup has stepped up uh, the last two weeks. So grade Michael Gallup so far this season. A, B, C, D, or F. Head down to the comments section. Let me know how you feel about what the Cowboys uh, receiver has done this season. Micah Parsons is next up here. Now, he had no sacks, and there will be some out there who use that as, ah, see, he's overrated. Well, not really. Uh, just sacks is a poor way to evaluate a football player. Micah Parsons had 10 pressures on 27 pass rush snaps. A hilarious figure, despite banging his knee, getting his foot injured a little bit there. He's fine, by the way. He was consistently disruptive last week. Here are the NFL pressure rate leaders before Monday Night Football, uh, you know, with minimum 50 snaps, who, who have qualified and not just like, they blitzed four times and got home on two of them, you know. Uh, Rashawn Gary, 28.8%. Bryce Huff, 26.9%. Micah's third. Josh Uche's fourth. Three of those four players are not really full-time players. Uche, Uche's a bit of a, of a, a little bit more than Huff and Gary. But Huff and Gary have been kind of pass rush specialists. They come in in obvious passing downs. They don't have as many snaps because they're getting premium matchups. Micah's out there a ton. That's why Miles Garrett is so high. John Franklin Myers is high because the Jets get a lot of pressure, except against the Cowboys. Max Crosby, he's great. Lawrence Armstrong, Tank Lawrence, by the way, also in the top 10. You've got three players in the top 10 among the edge pressure rate leaders. That's pretty good. As for some negative here, Luke Schoonmaker got to be better. Uh, dropped a, honestly, I think maybe one of the better 
top two or three throws of the day from Dak. It was a seam shot downfield. It was a shot beyond 20 yards, by the way, or at least air yards it was. Over the middle, great placement. Scooter's got to make an admittedly tough catch, got to contort his body to pull it in because it's the only spot you can throw it to, and he drops it. Uh, Schoonmaker has more drops than catches this year. He had the nice, simple, easy one-yard touchdown play, but he has two drops on the season. That's your second-round pick. He had a little bit more out of him, especially when Hendershot was out last week. We'll see if he's able to go this coming week, but you need more out of Schoonmaker. The athletic ability is there. I think he's been fine as a blocker. Hold on to those passes, and better things will come. 